are you an English learner who's struggling with using new words when you speak? Do you keep forgetting words that you spend so much time studying? Would you like to know how to use words in context? Well, in today's video, we'll be discovering how you can implement some of the newly acquired words and grammar into your speaking, into your more active skills, something that I see a lot of struggling students have issues with. Hey language learners, my name is Chubby. Welcome to my channel for English learners who want to make more vocabulary memorable through listening and speaking. So when it comes to students who want to improve their speaking fluency, what most of them think will help them is if they keep speaking until eternity. So I've lived in Japan for about three years now and students here are encouraged to take short but regular lessons with native speaker teachers and keep speaking. So those quote unquote teachers, what they do in the lesson is that they basically help their students maintain a conversation in English and that's it. But that's just simply not enough. I've met several people here who seem to take these conversation lessons on almost a daily basis for years or even for a decade, yet seem unable to express their thoughts in English clearly. So it doesn't really help. Um, of course, the more you speak, the better you get at putting your thoughts into words because we need to have that fluency practice as well. But you'll either keep repeating yourself or say the same sentences or sometimes keep repeating the same mistakes over and over again. And of course, there's also the danger of you repeating all these inappropriate, sometimes culturally, sometimes grammatically inappropriate ways of saying things so many times that your brain believes that that's the appropriate, the right way to say things. And then you will end up in a stage where it's going to be almost impossible for you to correct those different shortcomings. And this is exactly where the extremely important role of feedback, you getting feedback, comes in place. But I'll expand on that in a future video because I do believe that deserves a whole video. What video you could already watch is this one if you'd like to find out eight of the most common, the deadliest mistakes that a lot of English learners keep making. Watch this piece. So why doesn't it make sense to just keep speaking? Imagine your first day at the gym. Um, when you start using the equipment, what do you do? Like, you feel nervous, like you look around, you feel like everyone's watching, probably everybody could easily tell that I'm a noob, stuff like that. And spontaneous speech is just like that. So what do you do? You normally look around, you try to copy what other people do, you hire a PT to show you how to do things the right way, or you watch videos like this showing you how to do things in the right way. And I think there is a parallel between how to use, you know, gym equipment for fitness and fluency. So look at fluency as fitness. Like you don't go to the gym, lift barbells, work on the machines to be able to be good at lifting barbells and working on the machines. You go there because you want to gain fitness. So fluency needs practice. And whatever now you're able to do, you're able to um, say when you speak spontaneously, is something you have already automatized. So if you can't use a specific word, expression, or grammatical structure, it's either because you didn't learn it properly or because you haven't practiced enough. So here's what you could do, and this is the most important thing that a lot of learners miss. Um, always have a goal in mind whenever you are practicing or speaking. It's virtually impossible for you, let me just fix this, virtually impossible for you to really work on your speaking and trying to focus on everything. You will get overwhelmed because there's so many things you need to pay attention to. You will feel nervous, anxiety hits, and then bam, that's so much about language acquisition. You can always focus on some specific key features. So you could look at some set phrases you want to use, some key vocabulary useful phrases, interesting vocabulary connected to some topics as well, pronunciation features or a specific grammatical structure, but always have a goal in mind when it comes to speaking practice as well. And later on, of course, you will practice, you will get so good at it, automatize it, that later you will feel like you can use all of these things and pay less attention to everything when it comes to spontaneous speech. So language obviously takes a long time and it's important for us to set micro goals every single time we practice because it's a way for you to measure your progress. 
Also, one thing that a lot of learners don't do is systematic repetition. And I know it sounds boring, you're like, oh, who wants to do the same thing again? But who said that when you practice repetition, you always need to do the same thing and it's going to be boring and repetitive? What basically gives you confidence in English if you're able to use vocabulary, grammar structures, different aspects of the language in varied contexts. So generally when you're practicing towards fluency, especially above intermediate level, try to start from a bit more controlled practice. And I'm talking to you who love speaking, who love spontaneous speech. I know it takes some time, it takes some self-control not to get lost in all the words and everything that you want to say, but if you really want to be better at using new structures, new words, new expressions, you do need to be really good at it. You do need to give yourself some time to have systematic repetition or systematic practice. My students will always follow a carefully structured program of focusing more on what they know uh, or even partially know instead of obsessing over something new, a new idiom or a new grammar structure that they are barely familiar with, tend to gain confidence so much faster and become fluent English speakers. It just means you could do this too. I've already mentioned before that one reason sometimes you can't use words in context is because you didn't learn the words properly. So let's turn away from words, focusing on individual words, and let's shift towards expressions, you know, word groups, formulaic expressions, and other verb phrases that will help you connect your thoughts to each other. If you don't know how to use a word, you won't use it. You need to find out more about its context. More on that and some other really helpful vocabulary learning strategies to learn how to learn words vocabulary effectively in this video. You might also want to ask yourself, do I spend enough time listening to, watching, or even reading in English? Believe it or not, the input, so the amount of English that you read or listen to, has so much power. Many people, researchers, polyglots, all students who have succeeded, who have become proficient speakers of English, they would all agree with me when I say how important it is for you to focus on spending as much time engaging with English, trying to consume English content as possible. And I don't just mean videos like this on YouTube telling you how to learn English, how to use different structures, different pieces of vocabulary. I mean real, authentic English, mostly English that you understand. I mean, how do you expect to speak naturally when you haven't seen a specific grammatical structure that you like to use or an item of vocabulary used in its real context, natural context? It's extremely important for you to see a lot of examples of how different parts of the language are used in their natural context. And I know there's a lot of learners who say it's so hard for me to listen to podcasts or read a real book. And in that case, first of all, I would say you can get used to it. It's all about getting used to the feeling of not understanding everything 100%, something you might have in your first language. But you can get used to not always understanding every single piece of what you're reading, what you're listening to, because you won't need it. Um, another thing you could also use is something that uses maybe a bit more limited vocabulary, something that uses more frequent vocabulary you're likely to come across, and simpler grammatical structures, something that I like to use with my students, which are called uh, graded readers, right? So graded readers are providing you with um, somewhat authentic materials, um, language used in its real context from adapted books. They are shorter, it's easier to measure your progress with them, and they range from like really beginner A1 level to C1 level as well. I highly recommend you start using them, create a habit of reading something authentic, something, listen to an audiobook version of them as well. Um, I will leave some of the my favorite series in the description below. Um, I can already highlight something you could definitely check out, the Oxford Book Runs Library and the Pearson English Readers as well, but I will read, I will leave a whole list down below. You also have to remember that although speaking to yourself, practicing English by yourself has its own benefits, um, of course it will help you gain some more confidence, especially if you record yourself on camera, um, you can improve your speaking skills, but it's not enough. You do need interaction. I mean, how did you learn your first language? Did you learn it through poring over your books in your room, um, watching people explaining to you different items of vocabulary or structures? 
not exactly, right? You learned through social interaction, through different ideas. You try to communicate to others, get feedback on that, and then other ideas being communicated to you, um, especially in your first six, seven years of your life. And this is exactly what you need to focus on in English as well. Struggling English learners don't realize that they need social interaction in order to improve. So if you say that you struggle with finding people to practice with, then I can grab the opportunity and just invite you to my free Facebook group, which is basically a place where you can also practice your fluency, learn some new vocabulary through weekly activities, weekly challenges and conversation classes where you will get some feedback on your English as well. I'm going to leave the link below so you could sign up and join a growing community of English learners helping each other gain fluency. Conversations in English with other people will provide you with this genuine opportunity to practice communicating and this is so incredibly important. And if you have somebody to practice with, this is where we could go back to what, what, what I said in the beginning about goals. Always think about what I'd like to practice in this conversation. Do I want to use some new expressions here? Do I want to practice uh, talking about, you know, my job or anything that comes to mind, anything that you need to practice as well. And it's so important to remember that you can learn from the person you're talking to. And this is where group classes using English in a more group setting is so much more beneficial because your partner, your partner's output will be your input eventually. And it's something you could always learn from. I mean, if you see how kids learn from their parents, they always copy them at the beginning, right? And then sometimes parents are upset because kids say something about who did they learn that from. So when your speaking partner uses an expression or a phrase, a structure that you don't know, you probably find yourself mumbling, repeating it to yourself, whispering the same expression, because this is how we learn. Learning is social. So try to embark on this journey and find people to practice with. Um, many people still say that they could do this alone, but they couldn't be further from the truth. I've had a thriving business in London teaching one-to-one -one lessons to people and I had trouble convincing them that what they need is interaction and those people who actually came to the events that I organized came to group lessons where they could really put in practice whatever they learned through um, our lessons one-to-one -one. they were the ones who actually succeeded um, improved their career prospects and their life eventually as well this basically allows for so much more of that genuine conversation that we need in order to become better at English. Research from 1997 shows as well, and this is what I use in my classes. This is why I don't like to give one-to-one -one lessons necessarily, because um, what they found in 1997 is that the best way for you to interact, to learn how to communicate, is in pair work and that seems to be the most beneficial. So I highly encourage you find somebody to practice with, get feedback on that, and try to put yourself in situations where you could really learn how to communicate your ideas in different aspects of the language. And if you think you still get lost with what you have to say, you get stuck, you might do this in your first language as well, and it's totally fine. You just give yourself more grace when you speak your first language. I mean, I find myself looking for words all the time. Teachers do need to think ahead, about two steps ahead of their students, right? And it's totally fine. So planning ahead, trying to take notes of what you want to say, what you have to say, is something that can help you clear your head. And of course, you could always add some words you'd like to use, some target phrases, before you speak, you could just jot them down and think about how you could intentionally use them when you speak, because it's just going to take off so much of the pressure you have on yourself, trying to always use the best version of your English. And then believe me if I say that once you already know what you want to talk about, you will focus more on the delivery. You will have basically more capacity to focus on how to say things in a more complex way or with a wider range of vocabulary. As always, thank you so much for making it through in this video as well. As I'm still building my channel, any sort of subscribe, interaction, like, comment will be truly appreciated. You guys are already helping me so much. Let me also know what else you'd like me to create some videos about so I can help you the best way I can on your language learning journey. Thank you so much again. Have a lovely day and don't forget to immerse yourself in English.